Blister packs, don't you just love them? Two things used to come to mind when you get something in a blister pack. Nowadays it's three, what with the war on plastics and all. It used to be, how on earth do I get into this without slicing my fingers off? And what's inside is probably going to be cheap. This week it's a double treat and a triple threat. So, plasters at the ready. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR on Air. Yes, it's a double treat from Crosman this week, and in a way, it's four guns in two. Confused? Stick around and all will become clear. Hopefully. You see, I have two new CO2 pistols here from Crosman, who are known for producing some interesting and decent budget air guns. Yes, Messrs. Angry of Mayfair and Massachusetts. I said air guns and not CO2 guns, because manufacturers class them as air guns. Anyway, trolls out the way. Are these latest offerings from Crosman interesting? A. Decent. B. And budget. C. My first reaction when guns are presented in blister packs is... Oh. Followed by a look at the price tag... But, when I opened these, I was pleasantly surprised. Firstly, let's confirm C, budget. Yes, they are pretty well priced. And B, decent. In fact, I would go further than decent, certainly with the first one of the pair, the Crosman. Night Stalker. <laughs> Love the name. As do... Crosman, because they have emblazoned it in big letters on the top slide. Well, that's the bad news out of the way. It's all good from here on in. You see, taking this out of the pack, you get the instant feeling of a weighty balance and quality you really didn't expect. Then the desire to explore closer. It is weighty at 720 grams or 1.6 pounds due to the mostly metal construction. The top slide, main body, trigger, trigger guard are all metal along with the 20 round dropout magazine. The only real plastic is the wrap around single piece grip which is very, very comfortable. Certainly in my hand. Let's take a closer look. The top slide, as we've said, is all metal and is a blowback action. With fixed sights, front and rear, the rears having white dots to aid sighting. All a little bit irrelevant, as we'll see later. The slide also has a cutout to simulate an ejector port, which is always a nice touch on a blowback action. The white lettering is a little annoying, but could be blacked out or possibly removed with some care and attention. Under the front of the barrel area is a rail for toys, but not for lasers, because this comes pre-fitted with a nice, inconspicuous one, just under the front of the barrel. Which, incidentally, is removable and fully adjustable and has a really nice, sure-footed, on-off switch to it. Which is just in front of the gun's safety and is a simple push-through item. To remove the laser to replace batteries, etc., simply press the button on the right-hand side and pull it out. The safety, as we have already said, is on the right hand side and is a nice push down and slide item showing white for safe, red for fire. This locks the trigger completely and can be operated by the trigger finger if you're right handed. No good for lefties I'm afraid. The grip slides back to reveal the CO2, which is a simple drop-in and tighten item using the hidden twist handle underneath. So, no hex keys required. The 20-round magazine 
is simply removed by depressing the catch on the bottom and pulling out. Loading this weighty magazine with 4.5mm BBs is done by sliding down the spring, lock it into place and carefully drop your 20 rounds in through the top. Once you've done all 20, simply carefully release the spring, return to the gun and you're good to go. This is a lock open after last shot pistol which is another nice touch. So, for your £119 UK retail price, you get a weighty, well-made blowback pistol with lock open after last shot, built-in laser, accessory rail, even the batteries for the laser. But, with the sighting aids, is it capable of actually hitting anything? So, here goes, usual 10 metre indoor range. Blimey, this is a BB gun, don't forget, and results like that are pretty satisfying and better than I was really expecting. It is naturally easier to use with the laser on, and whilst this one perhaps needs a little more adjusting, the grouping was pretty good. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. What about power then? Well, they claim up to 420 feet per second, which would be quite respectable for a blowback pistol. Is it capable of doing that with standard BBs, or does it require some lightweight ammo to achieve it? Chrono out. So, with 4.5mm steel BBs, it achieved a maximum of 374 feet per second, which is 1.67 foot pounds, or 2.26 joules, which is somewhat short of the claimed figure. So, lighter dust devils next to see if it likes them and if we can improve on the FPS figures. Well, these saw a maximum of 405 feet per second, which is 1.58 foot pounds or 2.15 joules. This is, of course, closer to the claimed 420 figure, but not there yet. Finally, the plastic 4.5mm BBs, and as you would have expected, this did exceed the claim figure, and produced 575 feet per second, or 1.48 foot-pounds at 2.01 joules. At this point, for the record, whilst this has proven the performance figure, I should state that it doesn't like the plastic BBs and refused to cycle properly and had a similar effect with the Dust Devil, sadly. With this first offering, I think we have proven the ABC questions. It is interesting with the included laser. And more than that, pretty darn accurate with it too. Decent with its pretty good build quality and feel to it. It is budget. In fact, I would go as far as to say it's pretty good value for money. Looking good so far, but what about the second offering from Crosman? The Triple Threat. Who is that? Straight away, this one hits the interesting category. Because if you can't decide if you want a 3, 6 or 8 inch 44 revolver, this one gives you all three. It comes supplied with three different barrel attachments for you to choose from. 3, 6 and 8 inches. And the strange thing is, two of them, the 6 and the 8, appear to be rifled. But the three isn't. Now, in part, I can understand why you wouldn't bother so much with rifling a three-inch barrel, because it's not going to get an awful lot of twist happening in that shorter distance. But the confusing part is, why rifle a barrel and then give you the option of firing steel BBs down it? Hmm. 
OK, I realise the argument is use the supplied BB magazine for the 3 inch barrel and the pellet magazine for the other two. But how many people are going to think that way? Anyway, yes, this thing is dual fuel or dual ammo, so to speak, and does come supplied with magazines to be able to shoot either. The BB magazine is a six round item and the larger pellet is a ten round item. So that's the quirky or interesting bit mentioned. Let's move on to the walk around then, shall we? As you can see, it is all black with the main body made of metal, including trigger guard, trigger and hammer. The grip is split plastic and the barrel assembly is also plastic. And as we've said, it comes supplied in three lengths, which are easily interchangeable by simply unscrewing and removing the single hinge machine screw. There are no nasty bright logos all over it, but there is this subtle Crosman logo and 44S, R or XL embossed in each one. Each one also comes with a fixed open front sight to match the adjustable rear sight, which has adjustments for both windage and elevation. Below this is the push-through safety, which simply and effectively stops the hammer from striking home. It has a small red dot visible from the rear when it's in fire mode. The cylinder doesn't rotate, it's purely for show and effect rather than anything else. The magazines slot into the rear of the barrel assemblies, which can be done by depressing the top button an opening, a little bit like the Webley service revolver method, but without the cartridges. The two supplied magazines are ammo specific and are simple to load but shouldn't be mixed up. And as previously mentioned, ideally this doesn't want to be shooting BBs, steel ones at least, in anything other than the 3 inch barrel. Loading the CO2 is done by removing the plastic grip, but really needs both of these sides removing in order to be able to use the tightening screw easily. Slot in your CO2 and tighten. Once done, return the grips. And you're ready to go. The trigger is a little stiff, if you're wanting it to do all the work, but if you cock the hammer back, then naturally it becomes a lot lighter. The one thing I'm really interested in here is the power figures, because experience has shown me the longer the barrel, the higher the feet per second figure. So, with a claimed 465 feet per second, it's time to get the chrono out and put this theory to the test. 3 inch barrel first with steel BBs. This saw a maximum 371 feet per second, 1.64 foot pounds or 2.23 joules. I then tried the Dust Devils, but it wasn't particularly happy with them and actually gave lower feet per second, even though they were lighter. Plastic BBs would naturally increase the speed up to a maximum of 551 feet per second, which is 1.36 foot pounds or 1.85 joules but these really should be able to hit higher figures, if a little falsely. Let's try the pellets then next. 8.44 grain JSB saw 355 feet per second or 2.36 foot pounds or 3.2 joules. So similar speeds with heavier pellets, but higher energy of course. Onto the six inch barrel then, and because this is rifled, I thought it unfair to shoot steel BBs through it. So, straight to the 8.44 grain JSBs. This barrel saw 419 feet per second, which is 3.29 foot pounds, or 4.46 joules, and proves just what I thought would be the case. The longer the barrel, the higher the figures. Okay, let's go straight to the eight inch barrel. Still sticking with pellets because of that rifle barrel. 
And in 8.44 grains, it produced 422 feet per second, 3.34 foot-pounds, or 4.53 joules. Again, proving the point of the longer barrel. But let's put some lighter pellets in this time. The JSB is 7.33 grain. This produced 459 feet per second, which is 3.43 foot-pounds, or 4.65 joules. This set of figures was banging on the door of the claimed feet per second and would easily achieve it on a warmer day or with some alloy pellets. Really quite respectable figures for such a budget gun. OK, I did put some plastic BBs through it just because and it saw 678 feet per second, which is pretty fast. Target work then. Again, the longer the barrel, the more accurate this should be. That's the theory anyway. Let's put it to the test, shall we? Indoor range, 10 metres. Here goes. First up, the three inch barrel assembly, firing steel BBs. Not bad at all, in fact I would say better than I was expecting. Next up then, the 6 inch version firing pellets this time. Again pretty good and as expected a little tighter grouping. 8 inch next time. And as expected, even tighter grouping, again using the 8.44 grain JSBs. Now I've actually enjoyed my time with these budget guns, and I'm pleased to say I've been pleasantly surprised. No, they aren't the higher end Umarex replica type, but the more budget fun. And in that budget price, you're getting more for your money and two pretty accurate little plinking guns which aren't that low on power either. Moreover, my experience with budget lasers has been, well, less than good in the past, but this one on the Night Stalker actually works. So, if you can factor into your budget some plasters or gloves for those blister packs, uh, you're going to be rewarded with a couple of little beauties. <laughs> Please, stay safe. Shoot safe, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.